Hi, this is Jeff Gill presenting How the Mind Works, Implications for Market Researchers. This presentation has a very lofty title, but really we're just trying to explain very briefly why market researchers should care about what happens in the mind below consciousness. I often start such talks with a description of the cocktail party effect. Many of you have heard about this effect, but I'm sure all of you have experienced it. You're in a crowded room full of people having different conversations. Suddenly, from across the room, you hear your name and you immediately start paying attention to that conversation. Think about what this actually means. You are monitoring every conversation in the room at all times without being aware of it. What's more, it's not just conversations. It's all stimuli from all five senses. The amount of processing being done is just mind-boggling. Only when something that is relevant to you happens does it come to consciousness. This means there's a huge amount of filtering that happens without you being aware of it at all. Furthermore, once it's done, there's no way to access that processing. Try to recall a conversation in a room that you were not consciously aware of. It's completely impossible, and the question even seems nonsensical. Yet market researchers often talk as if they can get everything they need by just asking questions. Daniel Kahneman, in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, suggested a model of the mind where there were two very different ways of processing, which he called System 1 and System 2. System 1 processes all the stimuli before it rises to consciousness. It's what creates the cocktail party effect. For those 95% of purchases made out of habit, System 1 is responsible. System 2 is what people usually mean when they talk about thinking. It is slow, one task at a time, and takes a lot of effort. However, you are aware of what you're thinking about, and it is important for complex decisions. It should be stressed that Kahneman's model is only one way to look at how the mind works. However, it is a very useful simplification, and terminology is widely used in the industry. And pretty much all scientists agree on the basic principles. So what does this mean for decision making? System 1 is used to narrow your options considerably. For example, purchasing a car is one of the most important and complex decisions that people make. There are over 20 major car brands in the world, but most people only look at two. So System 1 has eliminated 95% of your choices in a complex decision, which, by the way, is supposed to be System 2's domain. Furthermore, it has been shown by Kahneman and many others that we have unconscious biases with their roots in System 1. In many cases, these biases result in us making demonstrably incorrect decisions. But before you say that we should try to eliminate System 1 from our decision making, I will leave you with a final thought. Research has shown that System 1 is vital to decision making, and people cannot make decisions without it. In particular, instances of brain damage you will find people who have a normal IQ will spend hours in a shopping aisle trying to decide what cereal to buy. Without System 1 to cull their choices and focus them on critical decisions, people become paralyzed. In summary, we see that System 1 is responsible for a very large part of our decision making. Marketers ignore it at their peril. We hope you have found this little presentation useful and enjoyable. If so, we have a number of other mini-presentations on our website that focus more on Shimmer technology. As always, you can contact info at shimmersensing.com for more information. Thank you.